Hello everyone and welcome to yet another edition of 5 Must See Anime that you can watch right now. The show where I talk about some shows that you can find for free legal streaming, at least in the United States, and that you should go and seek out and watch because they're good. A recommendations show, if you will. If you do not live in the United States, you might want to find out if these shows are available on the websites that I'll be talking about and linking, and if not then you should just Google the name of the show and watch and watch it wherever you can because not all these shows are available worldwide, sadly. You may remember that this show was originally 10 must-see anime you can watch right now, but the last one I did was too long to put on this channel because this channel is currently limited to 15-minute videos, so I had to put it on my DigiDoes Anime channel. You'll find a link to it in the description. So for now on, or at least in the foreseeable future, I'm going to be limiting this to 5 must-see anime that you can watch right now because uh, it'll be shorter, and honestly, how many of you guys are going to make it through 10 whole anime every month? The first show I'll be recommending is Mawaru Penguin Drum, a very strange sort of esoteric show from director Kunihiko Ikuhara, who's best known for Revolutionary Girl Utena, and recently did Yurikuma Arashi. If you like those shows, I highly recommend checking out Penguin Drum, it's more in that vein. This is a show that starts off with uh, two brothers, and a sister who are living alone and the little sister is dying and then in when she's about to die of this disease that she has and her brothers care very deeply for her there's a very emotional first episode she suddenly comes back to life because of a penguin hat that she got at the aquarium and then weird stuff starts happening and she starts uh, taking her brothers into a mysterious otherworldly zone and giving them missions to do strange things this is the kind of show that's really hard to predict it's hard to tell what's going on sometimes, and it will take you through a lot of twists and turns with lots of interesting expressive visuals and tons of symbolism and weird stuff happening. If you want to see something that's a little bit out there and against the grain from what you're used to seeing, this is definitely a show for you with sort of a shoujo -y edge and some really interesting relationship dynamics if you're into uh, everyone's in love with everyone type shows. Um, this is one of the weirder ones. Next up, getting a little bit more obscure and a little bit older, we have Dokoida. This was an early UFO table show, back when all the stuff they did was super weird and eccentric. And it's about a, a guy who becomes a transforming superhero because he has to help aliens sell toys of that superhero. And he lives in an apartment complex with all these strange, interesting characters, none of whom realize that um, all of them are related in that they are either supervillains or superheroes that are fighting each other. So this is a, uh, a comedy, sort of wacky, mixed identity show that also has a little bit of social commentary and um, some more adult humor than what you might typically expect out of like a transforming superhero type show. It's sort of like a like a parody of the concept and if you're into transforming superheroes this is definitely a show that you should check out and it's it's got a it's got a, a sort of cynical bite to it while also being a fun uh, colorful good time. Recommended checking out, especially if you want to see what UFO Table used to be like before they became the Fate Factory. Up next for another really weird one from the mid 2000s, Red Garden from Studio Gonzo. This show is kind of hard to describe. The best way I can go into it is by talking about how I, what I believe the history to be, which is that the director, Komatsuo, was really into like American dramas like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and he wanted to make something like that. So he makes this really trippy horror drama show about a bunch of young women living in New York, and there's lots of pop culture references to American TV shows. The characters occasionally burst into song at random in some of the early episodes. And also there's zombies and violence in the midst of a young adult drama. So this is kind of a really weird one, but it's really entertaining and interesting, has a great dramatic arc to it, and an ending that if you're into shows like Shiki, this uh, this might give you some flashbacks to that uh, as it moves towards its climax. But I enjoyed it a lot, and it's worth watching for just being so out there 
and not quite like anything else you'll get in anime, period, really. Up next, if you're looking for something a little bit more conventional and a little bit more of a classic from the 90s, maybe some nostalgia for some of you, especially if you live in one of the countries that broadcasted this back in the 90s, Magic Knight Rayearth is one of the early series by the manga group Clamp, who you probably know from Cardcaptor Sakura, Chobits, uh, Tsubasa Reservoir Chronicle. This is one of their earlier things. It's sort of a magical girl show, but more of a fantasy show. It's about three young girls who are transported from Tokyo Tower into a magical fantasy land where they are basically the chosen ones, and they're also sort of magical girls, and they fight and try to save the world. It's got a little bit of a of a darker, more dramatic tinge to it than most magical girl shows, as is typical of Clamp. They usually are a little bit subversive of whatever genre they're working in. This is a show that a lot of people hold near and dear who got into it in the 90s, so if you want some of that nostalgic shoujo action, then this might be a good show for you to check out because it's available for free online. And last but certainly not least, a show that is Definitely not for everyone, definitely not for grandma, Seikon no Quasar. This is probably the most perverted, closest to actual porn show that you'll get from TV anime, but it's a really fun time if you are, if you are able to handle the fan service. This is a show, it's, it's a shonen action series, which is insane that this ran in what considers itself a shonen magazine, but um... It's a shonen battle series where all of these people have control over, like, certain elements. Like, the main character controls iron, so he, he just manipulates iron and that's his power. But the way that these people who use powers power themselves is that they have to drink breast milk in order to use their powers, which is called Soma, I think. And so there's a lot of breast sucking, a lot of really perverted stuff happens in this show. But the action is great, it's a good time, there's... It's it's sort of like a like a campy comedy like like one of those old weird B movies where there's like Nazis and nuns and like every kind of weird character archetype you can come up with all this Christian symbolism laid on for no reason whatsoever violence perversion weird shit lots of just fun engaging stuff. I had a great time with this show. I think it really transcends being a fan service show to being just this weird experience. If you can handle the kind of show that it is, or if you're if you heard fan service and you went sign me up, definitely give this show a watch. It's one of the better fan service heavy shows out there. So those are my five shows that I recommend to whoever's interested in the genre and type of show that it is. You can find the links to where to watch all these shows in the description. At least the free legal streaming options of where to watch these shows. If you can't watch them in those links, go find them somewhere else. I'm not going to tell you where to go, and I don't want you to tell anyone where to go in the comments. People can figure it out. Google exists. So anyway, have a good time. Watch those shows and come back next month for five more.